Hi guys, welcome back to art class. I've missed you. It was fun seeing a lot of you at the parade. That was so much fun. Glad you came out. Um, if you are doing any art at home, please send it to me at lisa, M-I, at provo.edu. You can do the art that I'm sharing with you or any art that you're doing or finding. That is great. I just want you to do some art. Here are three examples of some of the art we've already done. We had the doodle, um, inspired by Keith Haring. We had the shape of your heart, where you put all your favorite things in a big, huge heart. Um, and then we had the last one, Mary Blair, and it's your own kind of, uh, it's a small world, little um, village, town, whatever. Anyway, we're gonna read a favorite in my class, A Bad Case of Stripes um, by David Shannon, classic, great, great book. And then we're gonna do a really fun art project. If you know this book so well, or if you have it memorized, or if you have it at home and you don't wanna to listen to Mrs. Mitchie read it, go ahead and scroll to the end so you see the project and you can just do the art. That is great. Again, I'm trying to only use simple, simple materials that hopefully you have around the house um, and try not to make anything too crazy. And uh, like somebody in my neighborhood said, it's kind of like you're actually in art class and your parents don't need to help you. You can just listen and then I will give you the directions and then you can do your art all on your own. So if you have a sibling that needs help on their uh, work, your parents can go and help them and you can just totally do this all on your own because you guys are amazing. Um, and again, send it to me. I'd love to see it. It's so fun to see some of the work that you guys have done. Okay, a bad case of stripes. Bad case of stripes, David Shannon. Oh, Lima beans, you know this book. Camilla Cream loved lima beans, but she never ate them. All of her friends hated lima beans and she wanted to fit in. Camilla was always worried about what other people thought of her. Today she was fretting even more than usual. It was the first day of school and she couldn't decide what to wear. There were so many people to impress. She tried on 42 outfits, but none seemed quite right. She put on a pretty red dress and looked in the mirror. Then she screamed. There's cute Camilla. Her mother ran into the room and screamed too. Oh my heaven, she cried, you're completely covered with stripes. This was certainly true. Camilla was striped from head to toe. She looked like a rainbow. Mrs. Cream felt Camilla's forehead. Do you feel all right, she asked. I feel fine, Camilla answered, but just look at me. You get back in bed this instant, her mother ordered. You're not going to school today. Oh, Camilla was relieved. She didn't want to miss the first day of school, but she was afraid of what the other kids would say. And she had no idea what to wear with those crazy stripes. I love it. I love her stripes, by the way. That afternoon, Dr. Bumble came to examine Camilla. Most extraordinary, he exclaimed. I've never seen anything like it. Are you having any coughing, sneezing, runny nose, aches, pains, chills, hot flushes, dizziness, drowsiness, shortness of breath, or uncontrollable twitching? No, Camilla told him, I feel fine. Well then, Dr. Bubble said, turning to Mrs. Cream, I don't see any reason why she shouldn't go to school tomorrow. Here's some ointment that should help clear up those stripes in a few days. If it doesn't, you know where to reach me. And off he went. Even her tongue is striped. The next day was a disaster. Everyone at school laughed at Camilla. They called her Camilla Crayon and Knight of the Living Lollipop. She tried her best to act as if everything were normal, but when the class said the Pledge of Allegiance, her stripes turned red, white, and blue, and she broke out in stars. Oh, I love it. Poor thing, though. But that's amazing. What a great pattern. The other kids thought this was great. One yelled out, let's see some purple polka dots. Sure enough, Camilla turned all purple polka dotty. Someone else shouted, checkerboard. 
and a pattern of squares covered her skin. Soon everyone was calling out different shapes and colors. And poor Camilla was changing faster than you can change channels on a TV. Mm, it's a bummer. That night, Mr. Harms, the school principal, called. I'm sorry, Mrs. Cream, he said. I'm going to have to ask you to keep Camilla home from school. She is just too much of a distraction. And I've been getting calls from the other parents. They're afraid those stripes might be contagious. Camilla was so embarrassed. She couldn't believe that two days ago everyone liked her. Now nobody wanted to be in the same room with her. Her father tried to make her feel better. Is there anything I can get you, sweetheart? He asked. No, thank you, sighed Camilla. What she really wanted was a nice plate of lima beans. But she had been laughed at enough for one day. Just want some delicious lima beans. Hmm, well, yes, I see, Dr. Bumble mumbled when Mrs. Cream phoned the next day. I think I better bring in the specialist. We'll be right over. About an hour later, Dr. Bumble arrived with four people in long light coats. He introduced them to the creams. This is Dr. Gropp. Dr. Sponge, Dr. Cricket, and Dr. Young. When the specialist worked, when the specialist went to work on Camilla, they squeezed and jabbed, tapped and tested. It was very uncomfortable. Well, it's not the mumps, concluded Dr. Gropp. It's not the measles, said Dr. Sponge. Definitely not chickenpox, put in Dr. Cricket. Or sunburn, said Dr. Young. Try these, said the specialist. They each handed her a bottle filled with different colored pills. Take one of each before bed, said Dr. Gropp. Then they filled, filed out the front door, followed by Dr. Bumble. Uh-oh, look at poor Camilla. It's everywhere. That night, Camilla took her medicine. It was awful. When she woke up the next morning, she did feel different, but when she got dressed, her clothes didn't fit right. She looked in the mirror, and there, standing back at her, was a giant, multicolored pill with her face on it. Oh, no. Dr. Bumble rushed over as soon as Mrs. Cream called, but this time, instead of the specialist, he brought the experts. Dr. Gord and Mr. Mellon were the finest scientific minds in the land. Once again, Camilla was poked and prodded, looked at and listened to. The experts wrote down lots of numbers. Then they huddled together and whispered. Dr. Gord finally spoke. Mm, it might be a virus, he announced with authority. Suddenly, fuzzy little virus balls appeared all over Camilla. Or possibly some form of bacteria, said Mr. Mellon. Out pop squishy little bacteria tails, or it could be a fungus, added Dr. Gord instantly. Camilla was covered with different colored fungus, fungus blotches. The experts looked at Camilla, then at each other. We need to go over these numbers again. Back at the lab, Dr. Gord explained. We'll call you when we know something, but the experts didn't have a clue, much less a cure. By now, the TV news had found out about Camilla. Reporters from every channel were outside of her house telling the story of the bizarre case of the incredible changing kid. Soon a huge crowd was camped out on the front lawn. Oh, what a nightmare. Yikes. Oh, look at Camilla now. Oh, gracious. The creams were swamped with all kinds of remedies from psychologists, allergists, herbalists, nutritionists, psychics, an old medicine man, a guru, and even a veterinarian. Each so-called cure only added to poor Camilla's strange appearance until it was hard to even recognize her. She sprouted roots and berries and crystals and feathers and a long furry tail, but nothing worked. Look at her. One day, a woman who called herself an environmental therapist Claimed she could cure Camilla. Close your eyes, she said. Breathe deeply and become one with your room. I wish you hadn't said that, Camilla groaned. Slowly, she started to melt into the walls of her room. Her bed became her mouth. Her nose was a dresser and two paintings were her eyes. The therapist screamed and ran from the house. What are we going to do, cried Mrs. Cream. 
It's ju it just keeps getting worse and worse, she began to sob. Oh, look at Camilla. Look at that. Wild. At that moment, Mr. Cream heard a quiet little knock at the front door. He opened it, and there stood an old woman who was just as plump and sweet as a strawberry. Excuse me, she said brightly, but I think I can help. She went into Camilla's room and looked around. My goodness, she said with a shake of her head. What we have here is a bad case of stripes. One of the worst I've ever seen. She pulled a container of small green beans from her bag. Here, she said, these might do the trick. Are those magic beans? Asked Mrs. Cream. Oh my, no, replied the kind old woman. There's no such thing. These are just plain old lima beans. I'll bet you'd like some, wouldn't you? She asked Camilla. Camilla wanted a big, heaping plate full of lima beans, more than just about anything, but she was still afraid to admit it. Yuck, she said. No one likes lima beans, especially me. Oh dear, the old woman said sadly. I guess I was wrong about you. She put the lima beans back in her bag and started toward the door. Camilla watched the old woman walk away. Those beans would taste so good. And being laughed at for eating them was nothing compared to what she'd been going through. She finally couldn't stand it. Wait, she cried. The truth is, I really love lima beans. I thought so, the old woman said with a smile. She took a handful of beans and popped them into Camilla's mouth. Mmm, said Camilla. Look at her mouth. <gasps> Suddenly, the branches, feathers, and squiggly tails began to disappear. Then the whole room swirled around. When it, was, when it stopped, there stood Camilla, and everything was back to normal. I'm cured, she shouted. Yes, said the old woman. I knew the real you was in there somewhere. She patted Camilla on the head. Then she went outside and vanished into the crowd. Ah, oh, Camilla's back. Afterward, Camilla wasn't quite the same. Some of the kids at school said she was weird, but she didn't care a bit. She ate all the lima beans she wanted and she never had even a touch of stripes again. So cute. Just being herself, just deciding to be herself. Good job, Camilla. All right, so here is my project. It's gonna be fun. So I drew a very simple little picture of everybody in my family. You don't have to do this. You could do just you. So here are my pictures of my family. They're just kind of funny pictures of everyone. Here's dad, Chad. We got Jake, we got Colin, we got me, and we got Zach. That's my family, three boys, and me, and a husband. I could have done my dog, that would have been cute too. I didn't. Okay, so there's just us, really simple. They're not fancy, my second graders. And obviously, third and up. We've all done self-portraits, we know the placement. Your eyes are in the middle of your head, then in between the eyes and the chin, bottom of your nose, then in between the bottom of your nose and your chin is your mouth. Just break it down, it's really easy. Okay, so then I colored everybody in, kind of how they really look, right? Do, 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 hair color, eye color. Now that looks a little bit more like us, okay? Easy. Again, you could just do you, or you could do smaller pictures of her booty. Okay, now here's where I had some fun. I wanted to get everybody a bad case of stripes, but with their personality. So I put a pattern on everybody's face and neck and ears that I think is kind of speaks a little something about them. So here's my family. <laughs> and our patterns. Do, 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 do. All right, we got Chad. Chad is plaid and he likes structure and he likes things nice and neat and clean. I thought a plaid, manly plaid, really straight and clean, he'd love it. I am floral. 
I like kind of the beautiful colors and I like a little bit zany. Uh, so I went floral. Uh, Jake, my 18 year old stuck at home, um, trying to go to school. He is kind of like hypnotized by all this. So he's got a little hypnosis happening there. Um, here is my 15 year old Colin. He's kind of like a groovy lava lamp. And then here is Mazak, my 10 year old. He is just a bunch of shooting, happy stars. He's like a party, wherever you go. He's just a party waiting to happen. Um, anyway, so I challenge you to make a simple portrait of just you or maybe one person in your family or all the people, draw them out and then give them a bad case of whatever. Stripes, stars, flowers, anything you want. Have fun, send me your pictures. I'd love to see them. I miss you guys, you guys are the best. Keep it up, keep doing art. I have more projects coming. Okay, bye.